Cool, I won't trip on that. All right, and then look, um, I just wanted to start this. I don't know if you guys recognize. Apparently, it was Earth Day yesterday here, and um, Earth Day in the rest of the world today. And the UN Secretary General um, Antonio Guterres put out a message which is basically saying that humanity is just one small blip on the radar of geologic time. And like the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs, we're having an outsized impact in the case of climate. We are not the dinosaurs, we are the meteor. We're not only in danger, we are the danger, but we are also the solution. And I thought that was particularly interesting given that, let's see, I push this button, things happen. Awesome. So um, what I wanted to do today is talk a little bit about how we can hurry up because there, there really is no time to waste. And it was a great timely message from Antonio on sending a message thanking him for that because it was a really great way to start today. Um, and over 25 years, Rainforest Rescue has changed a lot. Um, we have done everything we can over the last six years to increase our pace and change our focus while still maintaining who we've always been and doing what we've always done. What have we done? We protect and restore the unprotected Dane Tree Rainforest, which is very cool, one of the most charismatic rainforests on the planet. Uh, no offense to the big scrub. <laughs> uh, they're very closely connected. Um, but you know, in that time, we've done 45 properties, and that equated to, let's see, I started six years ago. We had, I think, 30 properties, equated to 70 hectares, and we now have 120 hectares and 44 properties. So we've sped up the property and size of properties because <laughs> the world is burning and we've got to hurry. That equates to, to our comps manager loves this, 2,031,514 square meters, which is the size of a small European country. They're very small, I don't think it's that relevant. I'm um, created five <laughs> wildlife corridors and planted 350,000 trees. And we're speeding that up now. We had a really beautiful, sweet, like sweet story behind it. Um, Rainforest nursery that did 12,000 trees a year. And I went to the board and said, hey, 12,000 trees, huh? Um, world is burning. And they said, yeah, we should do more trees. So ultimately what we did was built up the funds and the story behind a new nursery, which is capable of doing 150,000 trees a year. So that's great. So I'm here to tell you what we did in the hopes that it's gonna help you do what you do faster and stronger. So this is really about organizational development. I hope that's okay, I don't have any Latin words in this presentation anywhere. <laughs> um, but what we did was storytelling, <coughs> fundraising, business partnerships, conservation partnerships, capacity development, be relevant, show up, be generous, and don't wait for perfection. So to go through that just a little bit, increasing your profile through storytelling. Um, you can't do enough of this. If people don't know you exist, you don't exist. And if you don't exist, they're not going to care about what you're doing. And our goal is to get people to care about what we're doing. Does anyone in this room feel like you're doing enough to tell the world about what you're doing so that they actually care? I do. But it's because we are working our asses off to do it. And that's why I put it at the front of this presentation. Those are some examples of what we've done. And I'm not gonna go through each thing because we don't have enough time. There's like speed dating or hot bunking on a submarine. So we'll just move right through it. But you can come to me, and you can email me, and you can call me, and I will help you be stronger, faster, better if I can. Um, fundraising. Everybody talks about, oh, fundraising. Ugh, it's so hard, it's such a drag, it's so uh, scary. It's not. Fundraising is a gift that you are giving to the people that are now connected to your story such that they care about what you're doing and want to do it too. Because what you're doing is vitally important. Every single presentation, we have seen over these two days, and every single person in this room doing the work that we're all doing is vitally important. And we know that, and we need to tell the world more, and we need to encourage the world to join us. And we don't really want them out in the field with us, because we know it does well, but we want their money, and we want their support, and we want them to tell their friends. In Australia, philanthropic giving towards the environment, you must think 50%. No, it went from 1%, I think five years ago, to 2%, and it's edging towards 3% right now. That sucks, considering how much trouble we're in. So it's great to talk about the small scale, and, and we're all doing such cool stuff, but we have to do more, and we can only do more with funding. I mean, the projects we're doing up in the Dane Tree right now are only limited by funding, but we are doing everything we can to increase that. 
those are some examples of what we did. I'll actually step aside. It must be weird having me stand in front of that. Can you see what's behind me right now? <laughs> it is, it is. I'll look at that slide over there. So yeah, those are some of the things that work um, around storytelling. And I thought I was talking about fundraising, so I'll push that button, and now we're talking about fundraising. Good, I'm glad I went through that already. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, get to know the people who are supporting you and find out what's important to them, and speak to that. Uh, yeah, foundations, it was amazing. We actually had um, no foundation fundraising going on at the organization when I started, and since then we've received well over a million dollars in, in foundation funding. How do you go backwards? Uh, yeah, um, and then uh, we added a fundraising agency who started working for us pro bono because we told them our story. And we were so passionate about it, they are like, wow, we want to help you be successful. Great, can you do it for free? Sure, we'll do it for free for a little while. So don't be afraid to ask. One of them is now actually on our board. That's great. Uh, third parties, so we're doing international fundraising. That's just literally part of your social media and your outreach, just duplicating your stories everywhere. Um, our database, anybody here have a database that they actually like? No, you're never gonna get a yes to that. But the database that we have now kicks the shit out of the database we had, and we're actually using it to improve our relationships with donors. That's what it's about. Uh, consultants first, and then once we increased our funding, then we actually turned them into staff members. And we actually have an amazing team now that makes our capacity fit our vision. Um, make your donors your heroes, very important. They're the ones paying for it, it's their legacy. It's not saying, hey, can we have some money? It's saying, hey, have I got a gift for you? You get to be a hero. You get to add to your legacy to show that you're doing something that made a difference when everything sucked. You were there and you showed up. And tell your stories, make your staff the main characters. Don't be afraid. We're all really interesting people uh, for various reasons. And um, I once worked at an organization where the executive director suggested that we give every single of the 27 staff members the ability to write blog posts whenever they felt like it. And that scared the hell out of me. Um, and it was one of the best things we ever did because they were telling our stories through their own voices and they related to different people in different ways. So don't be afraid to be bold and take risks. Um, business partnerships. Uh, business partnerships are incredible because businesses are always making money. And if you have an easy way for businesses to participate, and in our, in our case, um, we created this really wild, robust tiered sponsorships for $50,000, you get shoes and no, like social media shout outs and uh, special logos to put on their business cards and on their websites, things that really make them feel proud about the contributions that their business is making. And that goes up to 100,000 plus. You know, we have two business partners right now, between the two of them, they're giving us almost $200,000 a year. That's awesome. 1% for the Planet is a program that actually businesses go through. They will give 1% of their, their profits through them to organizations of their choice. We created our own, 1% for the Rainforest, but that's getting bigger all the time because we have a staff member who runs the program. And as it's gotten bigger, they have someone who works with them a couple days a week, and it's getting bigger. Um, and the Canopy Club. So your business isn't big, you know, 500 bucks a year is awesome, thank you. Um, partnerships, when I started at Rainforest Rescue, we had no active partnerships. We had friends, you know, we loved all the organizations in this room, unless we didn't know you. But I mean, Shannon, she's famous. I mean, I could point to a lot of you guys here. Mark Dunphy, where did he go? That guy's a legend, and <laughs> really funny, that was a great presentation, and inspiring. Um, but make, partnerships that are going to increase your capacity. So one of the first things I did was got to know Mark better, and that eventually led to us building this big nursery. Mark's our nursery advisor. Jabu Ben Yalanji Aboriginal Corporation, they didn't have a relationship. I mean, these guys own that land. For 46,000 years they've been there. And I mean, how do I get in touch with them? I don't know. <laughs> well, do you have an email address or something I could? <laughs> so anyway, we've worked really hard to connect with these guys. Oh, Michael back there, and Jason probably somewhere. Hey, how can I miss Jason? Lead Ranger, Forrester. These guys have got a restoration program, and we work really closely together to support each other, and it's awesome. Uh, James Cook University, our scientific advisor, is a tropical plant ecophysiologist. I don't even know what that means, but it looks great, and he tells us when we're doing something stupid, and he helps us establish great experiments to be more effective. How am I doing on time? Oh God, okay, um, anyway, that was really good. Be relevant, keep doing what you're doing, but pivot when you need to. 
we saw a need to increase what we were doing to be more effective. We needed more rainforest, more habitat, address climate change and biodiversity crisis at the same time. Oh, I just want to go back. You might have missed earlier because it wasn't mentioned. We're a key member of the Restoration Alliance up in the Daintree. We're the only ones with a significant nursery, and we are there to support people in restoration. Uh, build capacity to fit what's needed, right? So um, basically, as your vision grows, you've got to build your capacity to make it work. And um, you know, we went from one fundraiser, hi, to three. And we went from communications, hi, to a communications manager. And then we increased staff hours, increased it as we could afford it because it was like, well, we need more time and space for business partnerships. So we got someone to support the business partnerships manager. And then the best thing that ever happened to me in my entire life beyond the birth of my children was hiring our general manager, Tate Brammer, over there. Like, really, we hired unicorns. Two people made a huge difference in my life immediately at Rainforest Rescue. One was uh, Mary Beth. Ah, there she is. She was the first person hired after me, and she has held the fort forever. And there's something big about culture in all of this. I'll get to that. Be generous, particularly in your partnerships. There's always going to be enough to go around because we support each other. Show up. Culture, incredibly important. I'm so sorry I have to rush through this, but culture is everything. And if you care about your staff and your staff care about each other, everybody is on a mission together and we're going to look out for each other. Think of it as being on a boat in a very big storm. People care that they're cared for and together we will strive. And that flows from the top. So if you're in charge, be really cool. Nice, friendly, giving, everything. Show up early, go home late, but only if you want to. Um, but it all really comes down to that there is no time to waste. And we're only here briefly. And we have one opportunity to make a difference. And some of these lessons, maybe you already know. Maybe some of these things are reinforcing for you. And if you would like to talk about them again, come see me, because they work for us. And I've actually been in fundraising and development for 25 years. So if you want to talk about organizational development, I have opinions and experience in it. Um, but really, it comes down to the fact that we're in it together. And together, we're stronger. And around the world, we're massive. And I really love that Rainforest Action is Climate Action. How do you do? Thank you.